everyone, this is Michelle Kane with Michelle Kane Actions. Today we're going to take a look at how to create this edit. Um, here's the beginning picture, straight out of camera, and here's the final. And today we'll be using actions from the Creative Heart, the Heart and Soul, and the Botanical Blend set to uh, create this layer by layer. When I posted this, this picture originally on my Facebook page, it got a ton of response and lots of people emailing me and commenting asking if I would show how to create this. So here we go. It's uh, not going to be a one-click wonder by any means. There's a lot of steps that go into creating this, um, but this is how I edit, and the actions definitely help to speed things up. So let's get started. I'm going to take all of these layers that I've used to edit and just drag them to the trash so we can start at the very beginning. And the very first action that I'm going to play is Dull to Dazzling. And this action, I'm not going to change anything in it. I'm going to play it exactly how it defaults at 70% opacity. And this just gives us a little boost. Um, it sharpens things a little bit, gives us some contrast, and it's a good place to start. The next thing I want to do is give some softness to the picture because there's a lot of just um, deep texture in the picture and I want to give it just a little bit of blur, pretty soft blur. So I'm going to play Buttery Blur and this is in the Botanical Blend set. It's also a free download right now on my Facebook page if you want to um, get that. So I'm not going to make any changes as well to the inside of this action. I like it just how it is. It's just, again, to soften everything out, make it kind of creamy. But I do need to remove it off of certain parts of the face. And so using the layer mask, I'm going to grab a, a brush. And I'll start to remove it off of the eyes, obviously, because it has the blur. And we don't want to blur out the eyes in any way. And I just go over those until I know they're completely um, taken off of. Um, the ears as well, I want to go ahead and just take that off of there. And we'll just take a little bit off of the hair to make it nice and sharp. And I think I'll just take a little bit out of this arm down here, just where it just gets a little bit shadowy. And I might take a little bit, just slot slightly with a 20% opacity brush, just kind of zip it over just the entire face a little bit so it keeps its... Um, texture and contrast there. Okay, the next thing I want to do is um, soften the skin a little bit. And again, it's not necessarily to soften the skin to make him baby smooth, but just more or less to come in here and um, mix in this reddish skin because it was really cold out when we shot. So this we've got kind of a, a readiness to the skin, which we'll also attack later with the anti-lobster skin action. But I'm going to run Flawless Face. And it'll take a couple minutes. Um, just an FYI, if you haven't heard or um, checked out the FAQ on my um, website and you have any problems with flawless face running, you need to run it on a 16-bit image, not, or I'm sorry, an 8-bit image, not a 16-bit image. If you run it on a 16-bit image, it's going to take forever and a day to run. And you just go up to um, image mode and make sure you're on the 8-bit channel. So there's a little side note for you. So now that Flawless Face is run, I'm going to grab a white brush and about a 30% opacity brush. And once I have that selected, I'll just run it over his skin just a little bit. And not going crazy or anything, but just, just lightly running it over. There's one little thing I want to open up on Flawless Face and show you. There's a subtle details layer. We want to go ahead and just amp that all the way up. And you can even duplicate this layer, Command or Control J, and then take the duplicated layer and pull it down a little bit. And that will add more texture into the face so that you don't lose the detail. Moving from Flawless Face, what I want to do is I want to take these um, freckles that I see in his nose and I want to accentuate those and I also give a little bit of clarity and sharpness to um, his clothing because there's so much in the shadow and highlights with the kind of um, jacket he's got on I want to make that really stand out and pop with clarity so the action that I'm going to run is shallow clarity and before I do I just want to grab my brush 
a black brush on my flawless face and just make sure that I'm not really smoothing right here where I'm going to be trying to bring out these freckles just because I want um, them to be not smoothed down but I want them to actually pop out. Um, a lot of people try to minimize freckles but I don't know what it is. I love them. I want them to pop out and um, be a little bit more dramatic. So again, Shallow Clarity and this is in the Botanical Blend set. And so once Shallow Clarity runs I actually want to turn it all the way up to 100%. And you can see now the clarity is like crazy. It's a lot. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and invert this layer mask. Command or Control I will do that for you. Make sure you have the layer mask selected when you do that. And then with a probably 40% opacity white brush, I'm just going to come in here and begin to paint in this clarity to the picture and you can see the freckles are starting to pop out. I'll take that brush down to about 20 percent and run it over the eyes and so that's giving me a nice sharp eye. The catch lights get sharper and I'm also going to start to take this down onto his clothing. So we'll see. I'm going to amp up that brush so I can go a little bit faster and we'll do a before and after here in just a second so you can really see how that clarity is played in. And we're also going to run it just over the hair. So I like the hair to be nice and sharp and that's going to help when I go ahead and um, dodge those highlights in the hair in just a little bit. One last place I'm going to go ahead and just run it over his eyebrows, a little bit soft, and over his eyelashes. helps if you brush with the right color, white to bring it in and black to take it out. I do that every now and again. I start brushing and I don't see the effects. I'm actually taking them out instead of brushing them in. All right, so again, Shallow Clarity has played over um, and has been masked in over his clothing, over his eyes and over his hair a little bit, and of course those freckles. So now we need to start to darken up the picture a little bit um, and really what makes this picture dramatic is when the background gets really dark but he's the brightest part in the picture so your eye really goes to him instead of him blending into the picture. So the action that I love to bring richness and darkness to a picture and boost color is Sumptuous Smolder. And once Sumptuous Smolder plays I'm going to just adjust a couple little things on it. I'm going to take the entire group up to 100% and I'm going to take the actual smolder layer inside. Um, well, it is at 100%. I, I needed to make sure that was at 100% and it is. So once Sumptuous Smolder is on there, we need to remove it off of um, a portion of the background and definitely off of him. So it's going to be kind of a vignetting kind of action. So I'm going to grab a 40% opacity black brush to remove and I'll just begin, actually I'm going to drop that down to 20 and I like to kind of slowly start to take this effect off. And so again I'm just basically leaving it on the background. I'll come in here and really kind of get in off of his eyes and I'm going to leave a lot of it on his forehead because I want to darken that up just a little bit but I'm really going to be taking it off of his hair and the ear and this area just right behind him where it gets too dark and he just starts to meld into the background. I want to keep that detail so I'm just painting as my eye sees where it's too dark. I'm just removing and some show a smolder really amps up your reds when you've got red in the skin so you need to make sure you get it out of there. So I've really got it kind of pretty much off um, most of him here and make sure um, again get those eyes really really well I'll make my brush about 20% opacity and just sweep it right on past him and this is just custom painting here custom adding in so once I've got it kind of all taken out I'll slowly begin to put it back in where I might want it. So if I want to 
um, define his eyebrows a little bit more. I'll paint it in on his eyebrows. Maybe I want to make his nose a little bit more um, def defined, I guess. And maybe on his lips just a little bit. And I've got a 10% opacity brush. I'll put it on his cheeks just a tiny little bit. And then I'm just going to slowly add it into the very bottom of the picture um, to kind of fade in that vignette. Again, I'll go back and with about a 30% opacity brush, just start to paint it again back in very lightly, just so I see the dark background is where I want it. I'm actually going to very quickly change the color of my background um, to dark gray so we can kind of see this a little bit more. All right, so we've got Sumptuous Smolder in there. Um, I'm going to actually take a little bit out of here. There we go. Got a little bit more definition back into that side of the door. Once Sumptuous Smolder is um, on there, I want to soften it even more. So one of the actions I really like for that is um, Satin. And Satin is a free action from the monochrome set that you can download on my website, michellecamephotography.com. And once Satin plays, I basically want to just kind of put it on the door and I want to put it on those upper blue windows to make them really uh, intense. So if you can kind of look at the windows, you'll see that the blue gets really intense and the door gets really rich. So what I want to do is take this layer mask, invert it, command I and it's black so it's covered up the effects. I'm going to grab myself a white brush and maybe like a 30% opacity brush and I'll just begin to bring in satin and I'm going to drop my opacity of my brush down to about 20 and I'm slowly just kind of bringing this in just a little bit maybe on his um, the red here so once satin is in the picture, actually I'm going to bring that all the way around, there we go. I, as I look at it, I see that his face is super duper light and, you know, don't be thrown by that because we're going to add kind of a matte haze to this background here and it's going to take some of the contrast from that really rich doors compared to his skin, it's going to kind of even those things out just a little bit. But if you find that the skin is getting too bright, you can always go back to your sumptuous smolder layer and you can add some of that back in because again, it darkens and I'm going to do just a little bit of that right now. Um, you can contour people's faces quite well with this, by the way. All right, from satin, I want to go ahead and um, kind of pull that layer down just a little bit of what I did. So I'm going to inch it back up in the opacity until I see what it's like, what, if I like it, somewhere about 70%. The next action I want to play to give kind of that um, matte sort of feel, it's going to be Nightshade. And Nightshade is in the Botanical Blends set, and we're going to customize Nightshade. When it plays, it's set to the Blending Mode Multiply, and we're going to bring that up to Normal. And then I'm just going to actually um, play with this level just a little bit. I'm going to take this from 5 to about 24 and I'm going to take the mids and I'm going to take it to about um, 0.63 or so and then we'll just take this output level down here and take it to about 20 so we're not getting so much haze in there and I'm going to take this white output slider and I'm going to take it to about 40, 240 um, somewhere in there so now we've got um, something that gives us a haze. Again, if we go back to multiply that blending mode, you see how dark that is. But by switching that up to normal, we get a nice um, sort of darkening haze. So with nightshade, again, I don't want it everywhere in this picture. I just really kind of want it to dole down that left side of the door. So I'm going to invert the layer mask. And I'm going to grab a white brush and about a 30% opacity and just start to paint this in just a little bit and you can see the color is staying nice and rich but for the most part we are just kind of dulling the contrast just a little bit okay so once nightshade is played I want to just um, pop out his eyes and a couple little bits and pieces here and there on the picture so one of my favorite kind of um, 
boosting actions is called uh, Zing. And that is in the Heart and Soul set. And once Zing plays, we're going to go ahead and just mask it over his eyes and um, maybe on his hair. So again, invert that layer mask. And with the white brush, I'm going to zoom into his eyes here. And I'm just barely going to start to bring it over his eyes. I'm not going crazy. I was using a 20% opacity brush. And maybe his hair just a little bit. And I'm just going to go over those freckles one or two times. So once Zing has done its thing, um, I want to get some of this ruddy redness out of his skin. And anti-lobster skin is one of my favorites. And we're going to do it um, for CS3. If you own CS2, you can only use CS2 version. You won't have what's necessary for the CS3 version. But if you have CS3 or higher, you can use either of them. Um, the CS2 version of anti lobster skin won't brighten anything as it takes out the red. The CS3 tends to have a little bit of a brightening effect as well as removing the red. And I'm okay with brightening up the skin, so I'm just going to go ahead and play the CS3 version. And once it does its little thing, we're going to just grab a 20% opacity brush and begin to take out some of this red from the skin. A little bit on the nose, a little bit on that side of the head. And that kind of helps to tame things just a little. I'll turn that on and off so you can see. If it's too much, we can just drop the opacity of that action down just a little bit. And so it's just a minor removal of the red. I'm also actually going to run it right in here in his eyes. Just because I see a lot of red um, in the eye. Alright, we're almost finished here. There's only a couple more steps left to go. Beautiful warmth is something that I want to just kind of warm up the whole picture. And um, it is a color tone in the Creative Heart set. And so we'll play that. And when Beautiful Warmth plays, I'm going to leave it at the regular 60% opacity. Oh, actually, I might drop that down just a little bit, maybe in the 50s. And it's too much on hand, but I really love what Beautiful Warmth does to the background. But we're just going to remove this a little bit off of him. So again, grab the black brush, 20% opacity, and I'll just start to kind of fade this off of him. And you'll see as you look at my layer mask over here in the layers panel, you can see where I'm starting to remove this off of. So I want to leave a little on him to make him fit into the new um, color temperature that I've created for the picture, but um, not make him so yellow like he was before. Okay, now the, this next step, I'm going to have to merge everything. So if there's anything that I want to change in the layers below here, I need to do that now and um, otherwise I won't have access to these layers down here. I won't be able to change them. Um, I want to go back to my sumptuous smolder layer and I do want to darken up his face just a little bit. So adding um, about a 20% opacity white brush, I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to drop that down to 10%. I'm just going to darken up his skin just a little bit so that he's not um, so incredibly white. And in doing so, we're going to introduce a little bit more pink so I can go up back up to the anti-lobster skin and I can keep painting that in just a little bit. So I've darkened the skin, but I don't want to darken and add red. So here we go, just taking some of that redness out of there. Again, we can amp this layer up just a little bit. So now he's not quite so white. All right, this next layer that I want to do is I want to go back up and grab the very last layer that we worked on, Beautiful Warmth, and we're going to merge everything. And there's actually an action for that called Merge It. And Merge It um, will basically take everything that you've done so far and it will create a new pixel layer, um, basically like a flattened pixel layer, but it allows you to keep all your other layers here in the palette. So if whatever you do from this point forward you don't like, you could just dump that Merge It layer into the trash and be rid of it. So merge it, I just wanted a layer that I could um, have a pixel layer to do a little bit of dodging with. So there's no better tool really than the Dodge It tool, um, Dodge, Burn, and Sponge. So I'm going to pick O on my keyboard, which will get me to um, these tools here. And I'm going to select Dodge, and I want to pick the Highlights. 
and I want an exposure of about 10%. You want real low exposure because it a little goes a long way. So I'm just going to start to dodge the highlights of his hair. I do this a lot in my pictures. I'll dodge these highlights to give it dimension. Um, if I wanted to dodge the catch lights in the picture, I could certainly do that. I think they're way bright enough as is. And I'm going to drop down here to his coat. I'm just going to dodge a couple of these highlights. And again, this kind of makes it feel um, more sharp than it really is. And pops out those whites. So once I've done that, the last thing I want to do is just grab the sponge tool that's in the same set right here, sponge. And we want to set it to saturate. And I want the flow to be really, really low again because I could build this up slowly. So I'm just going to sponge over the blue just because I like that little pop of blue against that burnt orange in the, uh, in the wood. If there's anything else I want to sponge, maybe I want to make his eyes just a little bit more blue. I can come in here and just saturate the iris of his eyes just a little bit. Now don't forget, if you go too far with um, these certain effects here, dodge, burn, sponge, go ahead and just add yourself a layer mask and use a black brush and just wipe some of those out of there. I think we're okay on this particular picture. Let's zoom it out and let's look at the before and after here of those dodge and highlights. You can see it really starts to bring it in. And as I do click it on and off, I see that maybe I did go a little bit far here, but that's okay. Again, I'm just going to grab a regular black brush and just start to kind of take those down just a little bit. The very last thing I want to do is give an overall extra haziness to the picture. I did that once again with customizing Nightshade in here, but I'm just going to do my own custom curves because let's be honest, there isn't necessarily an action for every single thing that you want to do. However, there will be more similar actions to what we're about to do in my upcoming Half Light collection, so stay tuned for that. Okay, we're going to do just a regular curves layer here, and I've actually saved a default for what I want this curves to be so I don't have to try to recreate it on the fly here. So I'm just going to go to the pop uh, fly up menu and I'm going to load the curves that I saved a minute ago and I'm going to pick it and say OK and you'll see that it went ahead and it gave me my curves. So I basically lowered the whole mid-tones, just brought it down a little bit and then really brought down kind of this whole S curve that you think about where it goes low to middle to high just kind of lower so that makes it darker and then I just lifted this part from being down here to being up here. So I'm going to go back to my custom and I'm going to put it back where it was. So let's pop this on and off so you can see the difference. Do you see how that kind of just drops everything real nice and uh, matte and it takes down a lot of the shadows, um, a lot of the high contrast in the picture. But this isn't going to work everywhere so let's go ahead and take it off of where um, we want it bright again. So using that layer mask, I'm just going to grab a 20% opacity brush. And again, our eye wants to go to him. He's the feature. So I'm going to take this matte effect off of him. And you'll see I'm not taking 100% of it off of him. I'm just slowly taking it off until I see it's where I want it. And if I go in the wrong direction, I can just paint it back in. But for the most part, we've just kind of removed it off of him. Let's look at this again without and with that um, custom curve. It's really nice. Um, we can pop this down just a little bit if you want, if you find it's too much. I like it at 100%, so I think we're just going to leave that right there at 100%. And that's it, guys. That's pretty much the entire edit. Um, Let's just go back and recap. I know this was a very long tutorial, but you asked for it and you want to know how it's done. This is how it's done. So starting at the beginning, we played dull to dazzling, left it as is. Buttery blur is played just to soften the picture. We still have nice contrast, but it just has this nice creaminess to it now. Flawless face just smoothed out a little bit of that skin. Um, shallow Clarity from the Botanical Blends is a really great one for bringing in um, the highlights and making the eyes a lot sharper. 
Um, Sumptuous Smolder is an awesome one for darkening and giving a rich creaminess to the picture. So that was painted mostly on the background and then a little bit on the skin to bring in the definition and the depth so he's not incredibly um, vampire white. Satin, again, that's that free action that you can download on my website. And this, again, gave a richness but a creaminess at the same time. So that was mostly used on the backdrop. Um, Nightshade. This was the one that we tweaked just a little bit to darken up that edge um, on the left-hand side, so we really feature him. He's really um, our focal point now. Uh, zing, just a custom little zing in the hair and in the eyes. Um, not totally necessary, but it's a step we took. Anti-lobster skin, that took out a lot of the red in his skin. Um, beautiful warmth warmed up the entire image. It just kind of changed the color temperature just a little bit. I love that one for adding warmth to a picture. Um, very quick and simple and that was masked just a little bit off of him. Then we merged and just did a little bit of dodging and sponging and finally the last curves which was that custom curves just to kind of bring in um, I guess the, that matte haze kind of feel to the edges of the picture. So there's our complete edit from start to finish. Um, quite a marathon there, but if you want this kind of custom editing, you really have to take advantage of painting those effects in where you want them using your layer masks and um, making things dark where they need to be dark, brightening where they need to be bright, um, custom placed in um, sharpening like with a shell of clarity that's how it's done uh, it's it's not going to happen in an instant but the dramatic results are going to be worth it in the end thanks for watching everybody you can learn more about my actions on my website michellecanephotography.com and have a blessed day